Just a quick warning before this video starts, if any of you guys happen to have epilepsy, there's a few sections in this video where I have to show off the pass-through feature in which there's some flickering on screen. You've been warned. So in today's video, I'm going over some of the lesser known Quest 2 features that Facebook and Oculus doesn't do a great job of properly making you, the user, fully aware of. Either from these being newer features that Facebook have yet to properly advertise or finish, or with some of these bigger ones because Facebook don't want you aware of them. There have been a ton of new and experimental features added to the Quest 2 over the last few updates and still many average users, like probably many of you watching, are completely unaware of. So I've compiled as many as I can into one coherent video to try and make deciding which features you want to turn on just a little bit easier. And if this is helpful to you at all, don't worry about it. That's what I'm here for. But a like and sub would be much appreciated. From using Discord on your Quest 2 to playing mini games in AR, there's a lot of extra features that you can access on your Quest 2 very, very easily that clearly not enough Quest users are informed about. There's a lot this little beast of a machine can do, and many only slightly tap into the power that this thing holds. So first off is one that you don't need any PC for and is built directly into the Quest 2, provided you're on a more recent update, and that's the desk and couch features. This allows you to mark out and pass through where your couch and desk is in your Oculus Home environment. This will then place a virtual desk and couch in their respective positions in your Oculus Home. So you can walk around, sit down, and work at your desk, all while not having to take your headset off, makes navigating your play space while not using pass-through way easier. To do this, go into settings, go to experimental features, and scroll down to bring your couch into VR and hit add. Go ahead and trace out your couch, similar to how you would with the room setup. Once you've completed this, you should have a virtual couch within your Oculus Home environment, marking out your real couch. You can go ahead and do the exact same thing with the bring your desk into VR feature found right below the couch feature. Go ahead and hit add, trace out your desk after you're done. Bada bing, bada boom, zuck on these nuts, we got a desk in VR, baby! This feature not only cool, helps prevent you from crashing into said desk or couch. Hopefully in the future we can get a full one-to-one -one VR version of our own real-life play spaces in our Oculus homes, as in some Quest Pro leaks we saw mention of full room scanning features. Imagine being able to have your full room in VR but with whatever posters, art decorations, and environment that you want without actually having to have to physically move or repaint anything. It's almost as if this was like a key feature in a previous Oculus headset that Facebook randomly decided to start to phase out as soon as the Quest headsets came out. For those of you unaware, this was essentially a full home environment that you were allowed to fully customize and you can still access if you connect your Oculus to it. A PC. This is something that I'm assuming isn't on the Quest hardware yet because of technical limitations as right now customization within your Quest home environment is very limited. In the PC version of Oculus Home you had not only full avatar creation but you also had full room scale creation too. You could place couches down, TVs that you could actually stream things like Netflix and YouTube to, boxed versions of the games that you owned on your Oculus account. I really hope we see a comeback to this in the future Quest head. Sets. But for right now, you got a couch and a f***ing desk, man. Pretty cool, man. Next up is multitasking. This feature was introduced in the V30 software update for the Quest 2. This allows you to use free apps simultaneously in your home environment, allowing you to put your couch and your desk that we just outlined to good use. Now, this currently only works in apps that are being run in the background, so some apps just won't work with this feature just yet. So if you want to turn this on, go ahead and go to the experimental features tab. Scroll down to multitasking and switch it on. Now, just open an app. Once open, go ahead and open another app. And now you have both apps open. Go ahead and drag either app to one side of the marked areas and bam, you can see both windows at once. You can close either one whenever you want with the icons in the bottom left or have both open. You can add up to three apps in total. And this makes workflow in VR far more practical. Nothing huge, but it's definitely nice to have for ease of use within the headset. Next up is Hey Facebook. Shit, I probably just activated a lot of Facebook devices with that. I apologize. This is likely one of the most controversial ones on this list as this feature is although useful, still very creepy and gives Facebook yet another direct line into your life and headset. This is another experimental feature that lets you use Facebook's version of Siri slash Google Home within the headset. Turning this on requires the mic to be constantly enabled, which will probably freak out a lot of you and will allow you to say, hey, Facebook, sorry again, and will allow you to use a range of commands and a direct line to the CIA. <laughs> 
Next up is the Oculus Move overlay. If you use Oculus Move to track your VR calorie burning, this should be of great use to you. This keeps the Oculus Move overlay on your screen while playing games in VR, and you can turn this on in the Experimental Features tab. Obviously, you'll have to have set up Oculus Move first if you haven't already in order to make use of this. Now, next up is a more honorable mention, and it's not really hidden at all. It's just a lot of users are completely misinformed on this, and I just have to mention it because the VR community has lost their minds over this. You can, believe it or not, actually use the quest outside. Yeah, I said it. After the complete ridiculing of the Wall Street Journal, journalist for using his Oculus Quest outside due to possible damage to the display and lenses, a lot of users seem to think that it's VR blasphemy to use your headset outside and will magically melt the cameras and lenses on site as soon as sunlight graces them. This is furthered by my recent Quest 2 one wheel video where the moment that the video released, I was bombarded with users freaking out that I dared take the headset outside. You can use your headset outside. The cameras, at least from what I can gather, will only suffer from some poorer tracking due to the possible sunlight interference. The sun should not cause any permanent damage to those cameras. The sun also should not cause any permanent damage to the lenses or screen if they are only briefly exposed. What can cause damage is longer sunlight exposure directed directly at the lenses that can eventually begin to burn and permanently scar the display. This is obviously bad. You can use this magnifying glass video example of burning paper. You can see that it takes a little while for it to heat up and actually start burning the piece of paper. It's the same sort of deal with the lenses don't expose them for very long and avoid doing it in general so if you are going to use your headset outside just keep it on your head or avoid exposing the lenses to sunlight for too long besides that you can enjoy using your quest out in your backyard without having it burst into flames instantaneously as the oculus community will like to have you believe but just to be clear you really don't want to expose these to sunlight for like any more than a brief glimpse. There's plenty of videos online showing how quickly within just a matter of seconds that you can burn various different objects with magnifying glasses. So seriously, keep my eye out the sunlight, but you can use the headset outside, kind of. Don't tell Facebook. So now onto the bigger ones. Next up is sideloading. Many have complained about being unable to use applications like Discord on their Quest 2, as many users seem to forget that the Quest actually uses a version of Android that you can sideload apps like Discord to pretty easily. Like really easily. All you have to do is download SideQuest to a laptop or PC. Now don't shut off your brain yet. I know a huge percentage of users through my Discord, Instagram, Twitter, everything that I use just completely lose interest and shut off their brains as soon as I mention that you need a laptop or PC because the assumption is something like this behind me. It doesn't have to be a good laptop or PC. It can be a literal dog water level PC. It can be your Nan's Dell Supreme Dust Edition. It doesn't matter. As long as it turns on, has an editor and a USB port. You can also use a phone to do this if it's running Android. You're going to need developer mode turned on for this side loading. It's really easy to set up. You just set up a developer account on Oculus. There's plenty of videos showing off how to do this. You should do it anyway, really, because inevitably, if you use your Quest 2 a lot, like any of us, you're going to at some point need a developer account and developer permissions in order to use a lot of features on the Quest 2 that have yet to be fully pushed out to the general public. Once side quest is downloaded to your phone, laptop, or PC, plug in your Quest 2 to the said PC of literal garbage laptop or PC via USB. If you don't have a USB-C to USB, they are literally like $3 on Amazon. Or if you have a USB-C port on your computer, which you should if you have a relatively modern computer, you can even use the charging cable that came with your Quest 2. Once your Quest 2 is connected, you'll see a green light on SideQuest. Now you are free to sideload a huge range of different apps and games from Discord, Instagram, Twitter, to amazing full-sized indie games like Gun Raiders and Smash Drum, to even sideloading Minecraft Java edition. Now, since many of you guys will ask here specifically how to go ahead and download Discord, just real quick here. All you need to do is download the Discord APK. The link will be in the description down below. Once this is done downloading, go back to SideQuest, hit install APK here, select your Discord APK file, open it, and it will go ahead and download Discord to your Quest 2. Put on your Quest 2, go to apps, go to unknown sources, and bada bing, bada boom, Discord should be right there. If I was a little fast for this explanation, there are some great full length videos from other channels like Complexity that I'll link down below that detail how how to do this and sideload anything else that you may want. Also, as easy as this is to do, I still hope that Facebook makes more efforts in the future to integrate commonly used apps like Discord a little better. Next up, going back to SideQuest, and that's the Pass-Through API. The Pass-Through API, for those of you unaware, essentially allows a host of third-party applications to use the Quest 2's pass-through capabilities to create AR experiences, like being able to fight enemies in your own living room or just play around with a bunch of fun AR abilities. This is something weirdly absent from the Quest 2 
to by default. Perhaps down to Facebook wanting to wait officially until the Quest Pro releases along with its full color pass through cameras, which were leaked recently to really do anything more with AR on the Quest platform. But for now, SideQuest is really the only way to access these sort of experiences. So how do you access it? With your Quest 2 plugged into a PC with SideQuest open, go to device settings and tools and turn on experimental mode. From there, you can search for AR related programs on SideQuest. Choose the ones that you want to install and go ahead and install them just like you would with anything on SideQuest. Once the download is complete, you can go ahead and boot up any of these experiences on the Quest. There's a good range of really dope AR games that channels like The Mystical have done a really good job of showcasing that we should see way more of very soon with the inevitable Quest Pro. Hopefully this was helpful to you. If not, you're welcome to tell me to go f myself in the comments down below. If you got to this point in the video, thank you. You keep my watch time high. You're freaking awesome. You keep this channel afloat because of that. So thank you. Big appreciate. And thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Bye-bye. Also, if you do like these videos and you like hanging out here and just chilling, please check out my other platforms like Twitch and Discord. I'm basically begging here, dude. If you want to talk to me live, Twitch is the place. If you want to talk to me when I'm not live or not on YouTube, Discord is also the place. You can ask me shit whenever you want over there. I'm also on Twitter and Instagram. You can ask me stuff on those platforms as well. Those links are also in the description down below. Anyway, I'm going to get to editing and working on this video because I got a lot of work to do. Oh my god.